Hi guys, it's Kelly here and I'm back with another video for Honey Bee Stamps. Today I'm going to be using the um, Quilted Hearts. The stencil um, also has a Quilted Dots. I'm going to be using the Happy Mail uh, Stamps and Dies and then the Pretty Postage Stamps and Dies. So you may notice that my background is craft, which is different for me, but um, I don't know. I guess I've been feeling the colored pencils lately and I like them on craft. So I'm showing you this beginning part. First, let me say, there's a sale. Honeybee Stamps is having a sale. It's 20% off all of their name brand, all of the Honeybee Stamps brand things. So just in case you're watching this, it is the April 14th through the 16th. Um, just in case you wanna get over there and make sure you can get what you want. But we'll come back to the sale. But I'm showing you this part. I am using um, Tattered Rose distress ink and I have taped down my stencil even though I know that I don't like that but I was trying to rush that's I mean I'm just gonna be honest the tattered rose wasn't showing up on the craft as much as I wanted so I switched over to hero arts uh unicorn pigment ink because I really wanted them to kind of pop off the page and that worked much better however I stuck with the taping of the stencil which again I know does not work for me. So it was my own fault. The stencil ended up um, moving on me and then I was having like double hearts and it's because I'm working on a silicone mat and I'm using um, purple tape which is not as sticky as regular tape and the whole combination was just a bad combination. So I wanted to show you that even those of us who make videos, who do this all the time, make mistakes. And I should have just done what I know I should have done in the beginning, which was use my Tombow on a multi-glue on the back of my stencil, wait a second for it to dry, tap it off on my hand to make sure that it's not super sticky, and then put that down on my paper because I know my stencil isn't going to move. So that is what I ended up doing. I did have a little bit of trouble um, trying to line it up so that it was straight, that my hearts were straight. But once I got it, then I was good to go. Um, I did use my same uh, foam pad to do the um, pigment ink in the background. And then I just peeled up my stencil. I got these cute little baby hearts, which I totally adore. And I just set that aside to dry because pigment ink does take longer to dry than dye ink. Um, you do need to give it a minute to dry or you need to heat set it. Also, forgive my allergies, but like if I don't talk to you while my nose is running, then I cannot talk to you at all. So sacrifices have to be made. Um, this is the pretty postage stamp. Uh, I think the stamp is totally adorable. Back to that sale I was talking about. So it's 20% off everything that is the Honey Bee Stamps brand. So paper, gems, stamps, stencils what have you, which is a great deal. It's for their sixth birthday, which is super exciting that they've been around for six years. I think I've been with the company for four, four, I think. And I just, I adore Melissa, the owner, um, and Lisa, who does all of the design teams. I think they're amazing women, and I love being able to work for wonderful people. So, but everything's 20% off, and it's automatically added to your cart, so, like, for example, this stamp is normally $10. When you add it to your cart, it comes down to, I think it's like $7.69 7 or something. It's like $2 off. So maybe $7.99. Math's not my strong suit, y'all. It's 20%. Um, but so, it's just a really good deal. And then they're also doing any... Um, purchases done through the sale will also get a free gift in their order um which is kind of fun and just an added little extra bonus it's kind of nice they're giving out gifts for their birthday um so yeah that's that everything that I'm using today will be linked below I use a lot of honeybee on my channel so if there was something that you saw previously that you're like wow I really really loved that um you know head over to the store to see if you can pick it up because it's a good time to do it as far as the colored pencils, oh my gosh, guys, the allergies are real today. Um, I just, I was really feeling no line coloring and I stamped it in the fade out ink. Um, what is that? 
Is it called No Line? I can't remember because they have other inks too, but this is the No Line coloring one. And so I wanted to do the envelope white, which is super easy to do on craft cardstock with a white colored pencil. Now I, I own all the color Prisma pen, colored pencils. I own the full set, but I realize that's not realistic for most people. So I've been kind of restricting myself to this 24 set that I picked up for like 20 bucks at Target. Um, and this is just kind of the one I take to work with me or travel with. Um, but I have been limiting myself to this particular one just because not everybody has access to, you know, this 200 pencil color palette that I do. Um, I just happen to have it because that's where I chose to invest my money. So the shading, while I would have liked maybe some softer grays, I'm actually doing with black. So even though I tried, and I did try, to be super light-handed with it, um, the shading is still a little bit darker than I would like. It looks really dark right now because there's no other colors with it. It won't look quite as, I don't know, it won't be quite as like the punch in the face it currently is once all the other colors of the flowers and the leaves are present. But right now it does look very like, ugh. And I know that and I can own that. So for the middle flap, I'm just going to add a little bit of shading to the bottom, and then I'll add a little bit of shading to the left and the right hand sides, um, just to give it a little bit of shape. Just like I would do with my Copic markers, it's really no different, it's just a different medium. The reason that I chose to do the white envelope first is because you can use white to blend a lot of colors, and this next part um, for the outlining of the leaves, I didn't want to risk taking my white over those really thin lines and then blending them out. Like that's not what the look I was going for. So in this particular set, there's different styles of leaves and some of them have more detail than the other ones. Some of them are just open leaves, so you would, you know, fill those in with solid color. Um, and the other ones have, like, these little detailed lines. And I didn't want to lose that with the no line coloring. So I chose to go in with a navy uh, colored pencil and just outline those. That's all I did. I didn't fill in any more than that. I just went over it outline the stems, outline the leaves, outline those details, and then I just left them. The ones that were open, you'll see I do color in solid, um, but I just really liked the contrast of that particular look, um, leaving them just a super detailed outline. Here, you can see me, I'm going back in with that black uh, colored pencil, and that's just because behind the flowers, there would definitely be more shading. Um, for the envelope, there would not, it would not be white like the front of the envelope would be white. So I'm just doing that small portion there because as it gets a little bit more spread out, um, it will get a lot lighter. So here's where I'm talking about with those outlines of those leaves. Um, and then that's it. That's just going to be the thing, what you just watched. I'm going to outline them. I'm going to add in those little detail lines. And if you watch my videos before, you've watched anybody else who talks about coloring with colored pencils, they know, um, then you know, they recommend that you have a very sharp tip. That isn't always like 110% the most important thing, especially if you're coloring large areas. But if you're trying to do detail work like this, then yeah, you need a sharp tip. And throughout mine, my tip did chip off or break off every once in a while. Um, but then that's why I have my sharpener sitting there and I would just resharpen it and then, you know, start outlining the next thing. Y'all, I'm so sick of this nose. Yes, I took medications. Yes, I've tried other things. I don't know if it's the difference between like we recently had some 80 degree days and then it was down to like 40 and it was rainy and now it's back up to like 60 
Um, so I don't know if it's a lot to do with the weather changing so much because Ohio, Ohio. Um, but today is just kicking my butt. It just is. So I don't have the uh, sinus headache yet, but I can only imagine that it's only a matter of time before that happens. So, yay. Plus, you know, I'm doing this voiceover before I have to go to work, like, normal. So, uh, you know, I'll be up until 7 o'clock this morning, hopefully, with less allergies. That'd be great. So, speaking of work, I did go into work and my vacation was not in there. So I did say something to my supervisor who is checking into it. Fingers crossed, y'all. Um, but I'm super excited to have hit my one year anniversary. It means I'm not on probation anymore, which is nice. Um, and so when you're not on probation, then you have full union protection from any issues with administration, which is nice. Um, so good to have. For the flowers here, I am starting with my lightest color and just kind of giving a once over. I do prefer to do my flowers section by section. So these are, I don't know, I guess they'd be like tulips would be the closest thing I would say. I don't know. You, If you're a flower person, you tell me what they are. Um, but so they have two separate sections that are very large. I prefer to do them section by section. But if I was doing a flower that had a bunch of petals, then I would do them petal by petal. Because especially with no line coloring, I feel like it's very easy to lose that edge. Um, and then it just kind of turns into this mushy mess. So until I get really comfortable coloring a flower, like I've done it multiple times, I just go section by section. It does take me longer, but typically I'm happier with the result. I chose to put in my yellow in the center of a flower knowing I would add shading to it later, but it just made more sense to me to put the yellow down first and kind of blend my like pink into it than try to put the pink down and then try to put the yellow over top of it. I hope that makes sense. So um, I do know, like I said, that I will be adding shading to that yellow portion. Um, I'm just right now using that bright yellow as kind of a placeholder. So I'm going to show you one or two of those flowers. And then I'm going to move on to kind of the next step. Um, Peanut is doing well in his little swim lessons, so that's good. He had those today. And then uh, today I actually had to get up a little bit early because we are in the process of um, going through and trying to get life insurance. Um, we each, like, have a little bit, but not enough to cover all the expenses that would need to be covered. Um, so we had to do a whole bunch of research because, you know, there's whole life and then there's term life. And then, like, I didn't know the difference between any of those. I'm grown, but I don't, I mean, I just, I was young and I never paid any attention to, I knew there was one that, you know, at some point it would run out. Uh, and if you hadn't died, then you would get none of your money back. And then I knew there was another one that, or I thought there was another one that maybe would go until the end regardless. Um, and so we had to do a little bit of research. We had to figure out what was going to be the best option for us if we were going to do whole or term. And I think term is the most popular, which is the one that like you pay for it because it's cheaper. So you pay for that one, and then uh, if it runs out before you die, then it just kind of is what it is. Whereas whole is more expensive, but it goes until, you know, you go to be with Jesus in heaven. So we ended up deciding that we were going to get a combination of both. Um, but then you have to jump through all these hoops, y'all. The hoops. I cannot... So Eric did the majority of the footwork. I'm not even going to try to pretend like I did anything. I really did not. He did the majority of the footwork. He talked to our finance guy about it. He went through all the things. But then obviously at some point there comes a time where I have to do the things. I have to answer the questions or I have to fill out the questionnaires. 
Um, and I was really not great about it because I was very annoyed with the questions that they were asking me. First of all, I had to fill out one by hand and one on the computer. You guys, they were the same exact thing. Like, they were the same exact thing. Why would I have to fill out two of these? Why? Why? I still don't understand. So then, they're asking me about um, any prescriptions that I've been prescribed in the last five years. Five years, guys. That's a long time. And fortunately, knock on wood, I don't have a ton of health problems. So it was relatively easy for me to come up with most of them. But what if you're a person who has, you know, a ton of medication that you're on? How are you supposed to remember everything that was prescribed to you for five years? That's just so long. And then, like, I had to put down my doctor's name, address, phone number, like, three different times. What? Why? Like, three times? Back to the card. Super quick. Um, so here, I'm starting off with a blue base. And the reason I'm starting off with a blue base is because I want more of a teal color leaf. So I'm starting off with a blue base. I'm going to layer over that kind of like a... Um, what's, what's, what kind of green is this? What's the green that I want? I can't think of the name of it. Nope, it's not coming to me. It's gone. And then I'm going to do the um, the darker shading with a navy. So it's a good combination of like blues and greens. That's going to get me like more of a teal look um, that I'm going for. I wish there was a teal in this set, but unfortunately there isn't. So I'm just kind of left making my own. And then everything that's not outlined, all the leaves are going to be this kind of like teal combination. Every once in a while, you'll see me kind of like pressing on the paper and what I'm doing is I'm trying to pick up the remnants of the colored pencil because you're not supposed to swipe it because then it'll swipe the pigment across your image so I'm trying to pick it up without swiping it and that's when you see me pressing it um just onto my finger so also side note every I don't know five to ten minutes my nose is running so bad and I am so congested I actually have to stop the voiceover sneeze blow my nose what have you so I can get through the next five minutes isn't that awesome isn't that just the best thing ever like how are people supposed to survive their lives honestly it's so annoying anywho um so the life insurance. So I did, like, I had to figure out the prescriptions for the last five years, write down all this crap repeatedly, and then they send me a follow-up email that says, on XYZ date, you were prescribed these prescriptions. What were they for and what was the outcome? You guys, two of them were antibiotics. Like, I'm supposed to remember every sinus infection I've ever had. Really? Really? Like, I wanted to be like, I, I don't know, but like, do you not realize that they're just common antibiotics that are prescribed? Like, what do you need to know that for? What? But anyway, so there was that. And then there was a very nice lady named Debbie who apparently had been trying to call me for like a week, but somehow she had the wrong phone number to schedule to come out and do my blood and urine. So they just come to your house, take your blood pressure a bunch of times, take your weight, your height. Um, they take your, uh, you have to give a urine sample. Do they take blood? Um, you have to answer a bunch of health questions, which by the way, PPS, were on both of the forms that I already filled out twice now. Um, but Eric's was before mine. So because of the rates, like the rates were better if we went with two different companies versus the same companies, just because there's a difference in like our lifestyles. So I just figured it was two different people. So he, Debbie came out, when was this? last week to do Eric's 
Now, in the morning, this is so funny, in the morning, <laughs> he asks me, do you think that I should just wait to go to the bathroom? And I was like, your body produces, like, X amount of milliliters of urine every five minutes. So, like, if you go to the bathroom and then start drinking water, like, you should still be able to give a urine sample and be fine. He's like, okay. So, he does this. Meanwhile, when Debbie comes, they do all the things. The last thing he does is the urine sample. He cannot. He cannot provide one. He drank, I'm not even kidding you, five like 24 ounce glasses of water and he's got nothing nothing and I was like I don't even understand I would have peed myself in the kitchen like let's be real I no I could not do that and god forbid I had to sneeze <laughs> no absolutely not that's Russian roulette every time so Debbie very nicely is like hey I have another client down the street um you know, I can come back if you want me to. So that's what she ends up doing. She comes back to get his urine sample. So then today is my turn. And who is at my door but the same Debbie? And I was like, what the? I was like, couldn't we have just done them the same last time? And she was like, yeah, I didn't know you guys were the same people. Like, at the time that I was booking the appointments. So whatever. I did have to get up a little bit early, but that wasn't a huge deal. Um, so I got up, I did all the things. I have a fear of needles, I'm a deep-seated fear of needles. So as long as I don't see it, I'm usually okay. So Debbie was very nice about making sure that she kept the needle out of my line of sight. Um, and it went pretty quickly, but it had to because I had to go pick up Peanut. So she came at two and I had to be out the house by three. So back to the card. Um, so here, everything's done and colored. I'm going to go ahead and run this through my die cutting machine, which it's um, complimentary die there. And then I'm gonna use the extra, extra leftover piece, wow, words are hard, to do some heat embossing for my sentiment. I could have just stamped this in a white pigment ink, um, but I wanted it to be a little bit bolder than that. So I chose to heat emboss it in white. And then I'm also going to use the um, coordinating dies for these to cut them out, just so everything has a little bit of dimension um, in the, like on the final card. In order to do the heat embossing, I just treated it with my anti-static bag. And then I'm going to um, ink it up with Versamark, stamp that down. And then just sprinkle on my uh, white embossing powder for both of them. One says Happy Mail, which I think is totally adorable. And even more adorable than that is uh, Hugs Enclosed, which I really like. I think that's just super cute, especially right now, like when you have so many people who haven't been able to see each other. Um, I think it's just a super sweet little sentiment. I'm going to clean that up before I go ahead and hit it with my heat gun, which I always preheat my heat gun. So while I'm doing the anti-static bag, the Versamark, the stamping, my heat gun is already heating up. So that way um, it melts super quick and I have minimal warping of my paper. So I'm just going to line up these uh, die cuts to go ahead and run them through and cut them out and then we will start building the card um which was a little bit again just like my last card video with all the foam tapes but sometimes you just gotta you just gotta take the foam tapes for the team because it's worth it so here i'm gonna put a bunch of foam tape on the back of my flowers um just kind of line those up and I did try to make sure that I got the foam tape kind of out to the edges on the top portion of it um, just because I didn't want them to be saggy or flat so I put in some bigger pieces and then I did cut some smaller ones just to kind of fit behind those um, so everything would be flush and there wouldn't be be there wouldn't be be wow there would not be anything that was uh, like sagging in the background. So I'm gonna remove that and then stick that down. I did have a little bit of, um, I guess, buyer's remorse. After I put it down, 
because I thought, well, maybe I needed to move it over a little bit because the sentiment is so heavy on the right. Um, so I put it down and then I was like, oof, maybe I need to move it over. But I think it ended up being okay just because the hugs enclosed portion hung off the other side. And while it's not as big, um, it did have something like so, a little bit to draw the eye to the other way. For the happy mail, I'm just going to put this flush with the flowers. So I'm going to put in some foam on the parts that will be hanging over the edge. And then just some regular glue um, on the parts that are on the, what is our left hand side looking at the screen. Um, to uh, adhere it to the flowers. It does cover up a little bit of the flowers, um, but that doesn't really bother me. This part was a little bit of a pain just because those smaller pieces were a little bit finicky, but that was kind of my choice to do that. Um, and then I did the same thing with the hugs enclosed. There is a little piece of foam tape on the left where it hangs over and then glue on the right hand side where it would be um, adhered on top of the floral envelope. So, um, yeah, I mean, after that, like you saw in the background, which is a part of the stamped image, it's got all these little dots around the like flowers with the hearts, which I think is super cute, but I wanted a little bit of contrast. So even though I did it with a colored pencil, I opted to go back in with a white gel pen and just kind of bolster up the brightness of some of those dots, um, so that there would be a just... A little bit more contrast between that and the background since it is kind of like craft on craft on craft you know what I'm saying so I went in and did that and then of course you know that I always have to add the uh, the shimmer the sparkle so I went in with a clear uh, clear glitter pen added that to the flowers and then those little pink hearts and that's pretty much all I added it to I didn't want to overwhelm it Oh my gosh, my apologies again for my allergies. So um, thank you guys so much for joining me. I hope you will check out the Honey Bee Sale. Like I said, that goes through today through the 16th. Uh, just a really good deal. So thank you guys again, and I will catch you on the next video. Bye.